change, which in the continued absence of Cyril Regis means another chance in the Albion side for the colourful 19-year-old Mickey Perry. But he's being pushed for that front striker role by Derek Monaghan, who's been out of the side for over a year now with a cartridge problem. And it could well be that Regis will soon be back in contention as well. That's the Wolves lineup trying to prove that at least one statistic is a damn lie. That which says that they are the worst side in the club's history. The record books show 19 matches without a victory, but there can be few better places to end that run than on the ground of your nearest opponents. The experienced FIFA official, Keith Hackett, is in charge this afternoon. Albion attacking the goal to our left on a very mild afternoon with a hint of rain in the air. Indeed, we're promised heavy rain before the 90 minutes is up. And among those in the crowd this afternoon, is the England manager, Bobby Robson, in the front row there of the director's box. Clive Whitehead, the Albion skipper, John Pender. Clark. Pender again. And it's an interesting chase, which I think Whitehead is going to win. But a free kick has been given against him. challenge on Steve Mardenborough player that Wolves managed to gain from Coventry City in fact throw has just been given in the end acrobatic clearance by Zonderman Ended after the ball had gone by Andy Blair. Zonderman. And Baron finding there was enough pace on the ball for the collection. And there's young Perry, whose hair has been given an orange rinse. No idea of his girlfriend, I understand. was sleeping a bit and Bradshaw did well extremely well certainly an error in the defence which allowed Arbion to get behind the back man as the ball was played so he stayed on side well, Bradshaw needs three games after today for his 200th in the league Good header by Whitehead, really attacked the ball. Clark, Andy Blair, this could be promising. Cartwright called for it, got it, has a chance if he can... The ball was slightly behind him as he was trying to make the shot. But he certainly orchestrated that. He was unlucky not to find the finishing note that he was looking for. against Whitehead an obstruction on Dale Rudge Turns, Mardenborough, and not a bad try. I thought the ball had got a deflection. In fact, I think the referee is right. Just a question of um, getting slightly underneath it, but it was a smart enough turn. Luke, Whitehead. on the van Balls back in numbers everybody behind the ball Joel Gary Owen so we reach half time at 0-0 and Ron Wiley the Albion manager 
one would imagine as disappointed as anybody else in the ground because it really was a thoroughly disappointing first half. Well, the Albion supporters start this hoping that Cyril Regis will be fit for Wentz's Milk Cup tie against Aston Villa and that he'd be rather better employed then than signing autographs, which he's doing during the half-time interval here. Wolves, the only team in Britain without a victory and the only team in the four divisions without an away point. Here's Alan Dodd and Kenny Hibbert, whom they look for the greatest inspiration. And has he got Mardenborough away here? Graney pulling wide. Header came from Clark. Whitehead. And he's fouled by Danny Craney. And talking of Craney, his spell on loan actually ends today, but I understand that although he hasn't signed yet, the odds are that he will. Perry. Luke available. Blair. Drill. Owen. Off the referee. Snapshot by Gary Thompson. Which wasn't a bad idea, seeing as the ball had changed direction completely by hitting Keith Hackett. Joel. Only to Hibbert. Now this is a chance for Wolves. They've got two men over here. And look at the delight on the faces. Well, Graham Hawkins, the manager, said, I don't mind how we play when we get our first victory, but let it come soon. They've been waiting all season. Is this to be the afternoon? Came from the terrible era. The first cross was not high enough to reach its man. The ball was only half clear. Came down to Danny Craney, who dispatched it with some aplomb. Club coming in the 52nd minute and producing rare delights among those who travel down from Monaco. It's a fairly hackneyed comment, 1 0, 1 0, but wall supporters haven't been able to say it too often this season. Danny Craney in possession. Wolves getting more players forward. Craney's made the opening and scores an absolute beauty. Well, it's all come right for the Scotsman and it's all come right for Wolves. Saw the opening, cut inside, and what a good left foot. Zondervan. Well, that's too much. Go kick. Well, there won't be too much doubt now, surely, about Wolves signing him next week. The figure from Celtic was put down at £20,000. Don't know about personal terms, but certainly the crowd will want him to stay. Reinsman furiously waving his flag, but Mr Hackett, a little reluctant, and then finally does see. 
probably the expected change. Mickey Perry, who comes off. And Derek Monaghan gets back into it. Trainee. Just too much on it. Oh, Martin will get it back again. Nice body sway. Releases the Clark, who is onside. Real chance here to wrap the game up. And Clark surely has done so. What a good finish by Wayne Clark. And Wolves have a 3 0 lead. And some good play by Martin Burr. Nice body sway, good timing of the pass. And some very cool finishing by Wayne Clark, which would have done credit to his more famous brother Alan. West Bromwich Albion nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers three. And this unhappy sequence of 19 games without a victory, which started at the back end of last season, is surely at an end. Joel. Rather hurried cross. Humphrey, a happy knack of being in the right place at the right time. Here's Owen. Graham Hawkins with the fair hair and the uh, brown coat. About to bring on the substitute, Jeff Palmer. Chap in the, in the light colour coat is Jim Barron, Hawkins number two. And it's Mumba whom he replaces. So a suggestion here that Wolves are going to batten down the hatches. Jeff Palmer, a defender. 15 minutes remaining, a 3-0 lead to protect. Offside against both Clark and Palmer. No doubt that the sting has gone out of the game. Monaghan with a chance. Thompson. Blocked by Bradshaw, up the angle of post and crossbar from the shot by Zondervan. And this thing suddenly came back. Flair. Well, he was unlucky, Zondervan. So indeed was uh, Thompson, who turned smart in after the ball, blocked by Bradshaw when it came out to Zondervan. He was denied by the woodwork. Thompson. And it ran Wool's way, Martin Joel. And it's finally in. Gary Thompson finally gets a consolation. Bradshaw was hopping around the goal from one side to the other. Thompson and Monaghan went up together. And then Gary Thompson gives Albion a consolation goal with less than a minute remaining. Cowdrill. Away by Dodd. Not too effectively. Thunder then, and suddenly the away supporters want the final whistle. Owen. They've been doing their best to play on the nerves of Wolves. They're their best. will not be good enough. One check of the watch by Keith Hackett. And the match of the day has become the smile of the day as Derek Dugan, the chairman, goes, I'm sure, to congratulate his team. Two of the goals coming from the man who is on loan from Celtic and who will now will surely be signed, Danny Craney, getting a pat down from his manager, Graham Hawkins, and Wayne Clark getting the third goal past Paul Barron. The final score, West Bromwich Albion 1, Wolves 3, and at long last, the depressing run has come to an end, and few will begrudge them that. <laughs>